Yo, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Ben Mahari here. Represent Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Uh, much love to the entire LDBC and the basketball community. Don't miss uh, basketball conversations right here on this channel. Friday nights, 9 p.m. Central Time is where we discuss basketball-related topics, historical uh, content, and everything else in between relating to the world of basketball. And it's tonight, 9 p.m. Central Time. So make sure to tune in for that, though. Show some love and show support. Also, share the videos and share and also spread the word about the channel, though, too. We are at 641 subscribers, and we are continuously growing and continuing to put up more content. So make sure to do your part, though, guys. I really appreciate all the love and support right here on this channel. All right, down to the business here. This is about actually an, another video on the subject of Doug Collins, which I did yesterday. Um, I want to give a huge credit to the new subscriber, uh, Lewis Sports Network. He actually uh, looked me up to a link in one of the one of the videos on YouTube where he's basically reflected on the 87-88 Chicago Bulls, the team that won 50 games out of 50 games and lost 30, won 50 games and lost 32. OK, and that was the year that Jordan won the most valuable player award and also the defensive player of the year award while leading the NBA in steals and score. OK, and so I was looking into that uh, to that uh, that documentary made by NBA, uh, NBA Entertainment. And the big thing that I took it away from when Doug Collins was talking about necessary about Scottie Pippen. He was more of concern about how Pippen was going to, you know, develop and how he was going to grow into his uh, in his role on the team because he because he basically ended his dumb midway through the season and wasn't getting much playing time. And when I was listening to the words of Doc Collins in between the lines, it led me into the in the impression that Doug Collins didn't have much faith that Pippen was going to handle the rigorous courses of the NBA season, which probably explained a lot why he limited Pippen's playing time. Secondly, in the next year where they won uh, 47 games, okay, Jordan played a lot of point guard. And basically, you know, there was a team that was basically flawed, a bit flawed efficiency in terms of their roster because both Horace Grant and Pippen were not at their peak yet. And also, they traded away Charles Oakley, who was basically their enforcer and their intimidator in the middle for Bill Cartwright. And so, considering all those things in hand here, I still am on my belief about what I originally thought about Doug Collins in the first place and how, why um, Doug Collins refused to answer the question about why he was replaced by Phil Jackson as the head coach during the 89-90 season. And pretty much Lewis Sports Network and I agreed on the same point. You know, he was a very underrated coach, but has a problem with controlling his emotions and, and wasn't really good at listening to his coaching staff and his players. You know what I mean? He when he basically kind of shrugged off that kind of feeling about why Phil became the coach, he was basically ignoring the, the advice of Tex Winner's Triangle offense. And remember, it was that ignorance of Tex Winner's Triangle offense that pretty much was one of the reasons why Jerry Krause, you know, gave Doug Collins the dismissal. Even though Michael Jordan loved playing for Doug Collins because he matched uh, Jordan's passion for winning and things else in between. Jerry Krause was very understanding and very smart to know that playing under Doug Collins, the offense was going to not have any diversity because Michael Jordan was going to have the ball the majority of the time. So this is one of the reasons why Tex Winter was brought into the offense. And think about this for a moment. If Doug Collins would have remained as head coach, I don't think Pippen would have developed into the player that he became. OK, because the thing is with, the, with Pippen was is that he. Had to had the ball had to be the guy to be the facilitator and had the ball in his hands most of the time to really run control things. This is where the triangle offense benefited both Pippen and Jordan because Jordan had to learn to work off the ball while Pippen learned how already knew how to work off the ball, but also learn how to be the facilitator and how to help to control the movement, which created the concept of the point forward system in the NBA that you see today with LeBron James and and also back then with Grant Hill. Okay, so. I wanted to give my huge thanks to Lewis Sports Network for bringing up that video because it pretty much proves my point that Joe Collins in the long run was not going to be the guy to help lead the Bulls to multiple championships because he was the kind of coach that rubs his emotion off the wrong way at times and was too intense to a fault. And more importantly, he just didn't want to improve what he didn't want to improve the team or pretty much improve his offensive schemes because his schemes were too much predict basically predictable a lot of the time. Listen. When you have a very young, talented team, you got to learn how to diversify your system and how to figure out a way to, de to develop the players that's going to help be a beneficiary to your system. And unfortunately, Doug Collins was not good at that. 
And this is one of the reasons why he was dismissed after making it to the Eastern Conference Finals in 1989. All right. But that's pretty much it is what it is, though, at this particular point. And it's pretty much what has been going on with Doug Collins when he came into Detroit, as I told you yesterday in my video about his time in Detroit when he was coaching Grand Hill and the Pistons. You know, he was doing a good job of improving the team. But again, the same tendencies came into play. His uh, abrasive uh, way of coaching, his over emotional style of coaching and rubbing the players off the wrong way. And plus, you know, his rift between Otis Thorpe in 97 and ultimately the big one, his rift with Grant Hill in 98 led to his dismissal. All right. Because as good, as underrated of a coach that he is, OK, his emotions always get the better of him. All right. Which is one of the reasons why he did not spend more than at least five seasons with a team. That's just the truth of the matter. All right. This is why we see it. Saw, that's why you saw him a lot of time as a as a television analyst for Turner Sports, for NBC, you know what I mean? And for ESPN. But right now he's a special advisor for the Chicago Bulls. I mean, but I read some reports that he's there's a current rift going on between Jim Boylan and Doug Collins. So we don't know what's going on with that. But the thing is, though, bro, like, listen, I respect Doug Collins for what he did as a coach. He's a very underrated coach. I love I love how his approaches to the game, and he's very, very smart and very detail oriented. But as I said before, his schemes were not going to help out the Bulls win a championship. It was basically too predictable, and the Pistons basically exposed that. And Jerry Krause was smart enough to know that. Listen, I like this guy, Tex Winter, and it's the concept of the triangle offense that's going to help out, you know, the team. And Doug Collins was just not willing to listen. That's why he fed most of the information to Phil Jackson, and down the line. Phil Jackson rose up to the ranks and became the head coach and pretty much fed into the concepts of what Tex Winter was trying to preach of the triangle offense. All right. Basically, mostly on player movement, ball movement, and basically working the working without the basketball. Michael was not particularly strong at working off the basketball because he's used to having the ball in his hands and letting him create and do most of the work. But with trying. But with, Phil, but with Tex Winter's triangle offense, it created better spacing and allowed players to basically share the basketball and move the basketball and find open areas to shoot the ball. Case in point, my one of, one of the most highlighting moments, the early moments of the, of the first three-peat team was back in game five of the 91 finals when the Bulls were playing in a close game against the Lakers. And John Paxson had 12 points in that fourth quarter by basically penetrating and kicked off of that movement of the triangle offense. And remember, Phil Jackson had to literally get into Michael's face and said, who's open? He said, John, and Michael said, John, well, then give him the ball then. Find a way to penetrate and kick and get in the basketball. And guess what? Michael was still getting 30, and John fin fin Paxson finished with 18 points in that fourth quarter to pretty much help the Bulls win their first of six championships. So it went to a goal to show you that Phil Jackson was willing to listen to his coaching staff and was willing to, to adjust and also feed into the strengths of his players while at the same time helping them develop new strengths that could help, you know, the team fit into the triangle system and become creative offensively. All right. So that's just pretty much my two cents of the situation. And I just want to give the Lewis sports network, the, you know, the respect and love that he deserves though for bring for game, basically bringing up that highlight to me, because I pretty much had an understanding of that, but to hear it, Listen, but to hear from Doug Collins' own voice back in 1988 pretty much validated for me why Doug Collins was removed as head coach in 1989. All right. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you guys think that Pippen wasn't going to flourish into the system with Doug Collins? Or do you think that Pippen would have still been all right even with Doug Collins as his head coach? Because in my opinion, I think Doug Collins. If he would have been head coach during the 90s, I don't think the Bulls would have won any championships. I think they would have been nothing more than a, been basically a middle-of-the-pack type of team that probably would have made a steep run in the second round. But other than that, they would not have gone anywhere else. That's what I believe. That's just my opinion on the matter. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section.